Thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use a Google form to create a dichotomous key for a science class. Now, what you're looking at here is just a basic candy key uh, that a lot of teachers will use as a starting point to explain how dichotomous keys work with kids. Um, you can find this same key on the internet and basically if you don't understand a little bit about a di dichotomous key the way it works is if it's used to identify or classify something like say for instance an animal or an insect but in this case we're using candy to get the point across so if you're not familiar with how it works let's say for instance we have a lifesaver we start out at step one candy is hard or not it is hard so we go to step two candy is spherical or not spherical what well, is round but it is not a sphere so we'll go to step four Step four, is it oblong or not? It does not have an oblong shape so, shape, so we go to step six. Step six, candy is flat or not? It is flat, so we go to step eight. And then finally on step eight, candy has right angles or does not? It is not, so it is a lifesaver. So it's basically just an identification system so we can learn the name of something. Like in nature, for instance, if you find a bug and you're not sure what kind of bug it is, you can use a dichotomous key to identify it. Well, often in science class, we will have kids take a, a, an array of objects and, and create a dichotomous key out of that. But what I'm gonna show you is how this might look a little bit different if it were in a Google form. So I'm gonna show you this side by side so you can see how I'm working. And I'm gonna use tab resize to put these two side by side. And here you can see on the right, I've got my questions, okay, and on let me resize this a little bit. And on step one, uh, candy is hard or not hard. That is my first section. I typed up the question. And then what I did is I used the add section tool on a Google form to divide my questions. Okay, and what I did is as I went through like here's step two, candy is spherical or not spherical. Then I made a question a multiple choice question, candy is spherical or not, and I use the divider before going on to section three. And so here you can see that my entire form is set up, okay? And when I got to the end of the steps, what I did is I made a separate, just a basic text section with the name of the candy and an image associated with it and divided those by section. Now, why did I divide all these by section? Well, if you're going to use a Google form as a dichotomous key, you can actually use a feature called go to section based on answer. And by having each question in its own section, then based on how someone clicks on the multiple choice question, it can direct them to a specific section of the form. And actually, with this kind of form, it's not actually something that they'll submit. Um, in fact, you won't even have to take answers on it. It's just going to be a form that redirects them from one question to another until they get an end result. In this case, what kind of candy it is. So now what we need to do is go through each question and identify which question they'll go to based on their answer. So for candy is hard, they would go to step two. So I click go to section based on answer and for hard I do step two and for not hard I do step five and then I'll go on to the next question click on the question click on the dots and choose go to section based on answer and for number two candy is spherical we would go to step three candy is not spherical we would go to step four and keep on going. I'm gonna go through the whole quiz this way or the whole dichotomous key this way and then we'll come back around and talk about what this looks like. Okay, and so we finally come to the end and I've created a spot for each of those questions. 
You may have noticed back here on step three that for no stick, I didn't have an option for it. And that's because in this case, I did not have a candy that fit that description leading up to that point. So if they ended up at that point, we sent them back to the beginning of the dichotomous key because they may have made a mistake if they ended at this point. So you can do that if you want to. And of course, as I've shown you down at the bottom, each of these items has a name for the candy and a visual so that they can see that they ended up in the right spot. So let's test our form out. And let's say for instance, um, well, in order to try the form out, you go up to the top of the screen and you click on the I to preview the form. Here's our form. And so let's say we start with a lifesaver. A lifesaver, candy is hard. So I click hard and hit next. Candy is spherical or not. It is round but not spherical, so I say not spherical. Candy has oblong shape. It is not oblong. And then candy is flat. It is flat and round, so I'll say flat. Candy has right angles. It does not have right angles because it is round. And here we are. It's a lifesaver. So in this case, uh, we are at the end of our form. Um, if I wanted to do another candy, all I would have to do is hit back and go back through the steps. Or what I could do is I could just simply hit submit. And then when we get to the end, I could hit submit another response. Uh, but by hitting submit, then what happens is it will create a response sheet where it collects responses. And you don't ever really have to go back to that response sheet because the whole purpose of this is a dichotomous key. It is not to collect answers from the kids. So, well, hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can use a Google form to create a dichotomous key. Um, I challenge you to go ahead and just work with your kids and give them a bunch of objects and have them create a key and then see if they can put it together in a Google form to see what that looks like. If you have questions at any time, feel free to visit my website and ask the techie coach. And thanks for joining me.